Well, so, Pete, yeah, fantastic to have you here on mm -hmm. the show. And let's talk, you know, let's, you're, you've been a media guy forever. Um, let's talk about uh, media spin. Let's talk about, um, you know, what, how, how, the media spin that you're seeing around the current administration. Let's talk about that. Listen, I think it's one of the biggest blessings of the Trump administration is the complete exposure of the left-wing media. I don't even call it the mainstream media anymore. What's the mainstream? So you're, t you're saying I have to accept CBS, NBC, ABC, you know, CNN as mainstream? I don't mainstream. like that term either, actually. It's a terrible term. People should <laughs> I keep stop using, using it. it. No, I do too, because we, we should stop yeah. using it. I call it the so-called mainstream media or the left-wing media or the legacy media. Words matter. I would stop giving them that sort, of, that sort of credential. In reality, they have to compete with new social media too. They've got to compete with Fox, which is beating the pants off them. They've got to compete with Drudge. They've got to compete with Trump and his Twitter account. And what he's done is they hate the fact that, they don't, that he doesn't have to go through their filter anymore. Right. And that's why they're rearing their head. I mean, it's also because he's a Republican. It's also because he's Trump in, in dramatic fashion. But Trump has forced them to come out. And I think if you're, if you're an American today who's not you know, asleep, you realize that there's serious bias in our media, and you're at least aware of that now, so you're getting it from other places as a result. And, and I, I just think for too long, it was assumed if there's a stodgy newsman reading a teleprompter in front of you, he's probably giving it to you like kind of straight, when in reality, they're not. And, you know, 95% of folks in these newsrooms, LA or New York, are liberals, or, le or leftists, worse. And they have an agenda, just like I have an agenda. I'm a conservative. I tell you what I stand for, and then I talk about it. They don't do that, and they lie to us. So I, I, the state of media today is in a really, uh, it's the best of times and the worst of times. The worst of times because 90% of coverage is biased and slanted against the president, and uh, they're out to get them, and they have so many of the legacy um, It's honestly megaphones. astounding. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's persistent. It's ever-present. It doesn't matter what's going on. It's right? orthodoxy. I mean, it, it is a religion to them, and that's why they... But it's the best of times also because one man's Twitter account has blown it all up. And Fox News double, triple rates all the other networks because it, it actually speaks to all of America as opposed to just the coasts. Uh, you know, podcasts, talk radio, websites, and people are thirsting for the real side of the story. And now because of social media, you can get it out there. Now we've got the even further danger of big tech, you know, that's deciding to censor certain conservatives who say certain things they don't want to hear. So the, there's always a new frontier in the battle for free speech. Uh, but I think this is a moment for conservatives to stand up and, and fight the way our president does. So Pete, we, a couple of days ago, uh, two important things, or at least by some estimations, important things were happening. One was a very delicate negotiation in Vietnam yep. with the president and Kim Jong-un. The other one was a hearing in Congress with Michael Cohen speaking. Um, those were on the same day. Um, one of them seems to have gotten a lot more mm, oh, coverage. Let's, let's be fair, coverage. Yep. What's, what's your take on that? Shameful. May I never be uh, supportive of an effort by my party to undermine or overshadow for political reasons my duly elected president in a foreign land. May that never be us. Uh, because that's exactly what they did. They said, okay, here's when he's going to be meeting with Kim Jong-un. That'll be wall-to-wall -wall coverage and it usually goes well for him. So we're going to put Michael Cohen, public, right there. And we're going to make sure we obsess over that. And then when the president does something we should all be grateful for, which is walk away from a bad deal after giving it a shot, they say, well, okay, he walked away, but it's a failure, it's a failure, it's a failure. You're never going to get anything else. Yeah, I was totally stunned by that because it struck me as, you know, uh, not just a great negotiation tactic for Kim Jong-un, but also for another very important player nearby, Xi Jinping. Who is in the middle of historic reorienting trade talks with right now. China's been eating our lunch. Your kids and mine, your grandkids and mine, could live in a future world dominated by communist China. Yeah. And part of it is of our own making. And we finally have a president who's willing to say, I'm going to throw up tariff barriers. I'm going to fight them toe to toe so that we are on a level playing field. Otherwise, our lunch is being eaten. That is the type of thing we should be celebrating and talking about and covering. Instead, we're running around talking about Michael Cohen and whatever next rabbit trail they think they have in the so-called Mueller investigation. It, it, is, it is a, um, as I said, it's almost the best and worst of times in Washington. You have a duality. You have two worlds. Uh, and the media happily perpetuates one side. But, you know, the president loves to talk about ratings. Well, there's a reason why, why, why a lot of their ratings are not what they should be. And if they are bigger, it's because of Trump. It's because he builds a bigger dust cloud 
that gathers people to it, and, and it's become a larger cultural conversation. So what do you expect uh, over the next two years and the run-up to 2020 election? <laughs> um, Media-wise, media-wise. Uh, media-wise, yeah. it'll only get worse. I mean, imagine a world where Trump has success on a trade agreement. Imagine a world where, um, unfortunately, no one's asking for this, but let's say Ruth Bader Ginsburg were to pass. Imagine that happens. I mean, you think you've seen Armageddon politically. Wait till something like that were to happen. Uh, the Mueller report is going to drop. Uh, and when it, 2019 will be a buffer, but you know, once it drops, I don't care if there's any collusion in it or not, there's going to be enough juicy nuggets that the media is going to salivate over. They're going to spend months on it. And then the House is going to echo it with uh, investigations, which we're already seeing from, from um, Michael Cohen. So I see nothing but a bigger dust cloud. It's only to get, in my opinion, in the media, only more stark, only more partisan, only more vitriolic, only more fake news. Uh, and with, they're investigating a man. They're not investigating anything else, whether it's Mueller or the Southern District of New York. They're trying to undo his business dealings, his family and his reputation. Uh, so I see, I see ultimately the president continuing to persist the way he's had to with a few allies and a Twitter account. And then in 2020, the voters are going to have a pretty darn stark choice, it looks like. Democrats have decided to go hard left. It's where the soul of their party really is. And if he has to run on borders versus open borders, you know, good trade deals versus the crappy ones they used to give us, strong military or not, help our vets or not, social, you know, capitalism versus socialism, jobs or government jobs, that's an stark. open and shut stark. Yeah. I mean, reparations versus why don't we go by the content of our character as opposed to the color of our skin. It's a winner every day of the week. Green New Deal lunacy, AOC driving the conversation. Forgive me, I never say AOC. She has not earned an acronym, okay? She's the socialist from the Bronx who's actually from Westchester. With her driving the conversation, listen, the president has a great chance to be overwhelmingly reelected, and that would be a great thing for America. Pete, thanks so much. You Pleasure to have you here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.